Hello, dear participants. As you heard, my name is Hilde Sattertrö, and I'm a project manager in the National Programme for Supplier Development. We have assisted and will assist NORAD further on in this exciting innova innovation process. I will tell you a little bit about the National Programme for Supplier Development, who we are, what we do, and why we exist. We are a driving force and facilitator for the public procurement of innovation. We have a task in anchor this as a strategic tool in public sector. The National Programme for Supplier Development is uh, led by the Confederation, Confederation of Norwegian Enterprise, NHO, the Association of Local and Regional Authorities, COAS, and the Agency for Public Management and E-Government, DFI, and 19 partners from ministries, directorates, funding agencies, governmental and municipal stakeholders. The public sector spend a lot of money on public procurements, actually more than 400 billion Norwegian crowns per year. Too much of this money don't demand new solutions. Evolving challenges in the society require new solutions. The public sector have challenges today and will face new challenges in the future. To address this, it is necessary to cooperate with the market and the suppliers to the public sector. Public procurement of innovation is an interaction between the public buyer and supplier. When the public buyer facilitates public procurement processes that challenge and develop supplier market. This conference starts this innovation process for EduApp for Syria. To interact include a good dialogue. The purpose of the dialogue is to get ideas and input from the market, the suppliers, specialists and other interested players on how to solve the challenge and meet the public need. Are there solutions in the market or do we have to create new solutions? This means new opportunities for you suppliers. This can lead to new products and entrance to new markets. It is a good way to interact with a customer and to build knowledge about the need and the organization that need it. This can be new places for meeting both customers and collaborators. And this is a way to positioning your business to a possible customer. This means competitive advantages for you. This gives a possibility for insight knowledge about the need. So be a good listener. Make sure you create a solution that meets the needs. You can affect the coming competition. You can see who your competitors are, but use this opportunity to also find possible new collaborators. Finally, I will wish you all good luck in this exciting innovation process. I do hope this will lead to helpful tools for children who lose valuable education. Thank you. Thank you, Hilde. We will now move on from the general information about innovative procurement to the specifics of this particular innovation competition. Our main aim 
with the conference today is to engage you, the market, and to get your feedback on the innovation challenge. So I therefore urge you to take the time to send us your written feedback. A written template for this has been sent to you directly and will also be made available soon on our website for electronic uploading. And the deadline for providing this written feedback is November 15th. Your information will be kept confidential and we will use this uh, to help us design the competition model. So what are we most interested in finding out from you? To go straight to the core. What do you think is the right scope and ambition level for this competition? How much can a game-based application possibly contribute to Arabic literacy and psychosocial well-being for Syrian children? We, of course, have some thoughts on this, but we still want your input in order to find out how high to set the bar. It is also really important for us to establish what already exists out there in terms of digital tools that could achieve the effects we're looking for. Furthermore, what particular expertise do you, as a potential competitor, already have in-house? And which partnerships will you need to form? Do you want us to help you facilitate or to facilitate these partnerships? And how much time and money is needed to create an app that responds well to the innovation challenge? Your answers to this and other questions will be a great help for us in deciding on the competition model. Uh, model. So please take the time. Hayu schmidt Horix, who is responsible for procurements in Urad, will now take you through the possible next steps for this innovation competition. Okay, thank you, Liv Marte. Um, I'm going to present you with two alternative competition models which we envisage, um, both within the bonds of Norwegian law and regulation on public procurement, which is always important for me to emphasize as I work with procurement. Um, I want to start with one thing. Um, both models are based on one presumption, that the market is not able to provide us uh, with an education app for Syria without further research and development, which is like the framework here. This dialogue conference can in part give us the answer which about if this presumption is true or not. Our two competition models are one, the design contest, or two, a pre-commercial procurement process. We have not yet concluded which competition model to use, or detailed plans for impl implementing one of the models. As part of making that decision, your overall feedback, as Liv Marte uh, talked about earlier, will be important for us, especially with regards to the amount of research and development needed. Now let's have a very brief look at the models. Let's begin with the design contest. A design contest is a specific procedure that is suitable for concept development. The competition follows the general principles on procurement law, like non-discrimination or equal treatment of tenders. If you choose to conduct a design contest, we will officially announce and publish it in both the European Notification Database for Public Procurement, TED, not to be confused with TED Talks, <laughs> and the Norwegian National Notification database, Dauphin. Using a design contest, uh, we do not need to specify our needs in detail, but can focus on what we want to achieve. Um, the publication will contain rules for the competition, including how different proposals will be evaluated and how winning concepts will be rewarded. It is important to point out that a jury will decide and evaluate on the different concepts. Depending on the rules we make for the competition, the winners will either go on to develop their concepts further, or the winning concepts will be used as the basis for the market to offer those products that, meet, uh, that meets our needs. At this stage, we are not able to decide whether the winning content, concepts of a design contest would need further development, um, like in the RD process, or whether a winning concept would be the basis of a procurement. 
Therefore, as this has been mentioned several times, we need to understand better how far the market has come and how much research and development is needed. An alternative to the uh, design contest would be a pre-commercial tendering process. A pre-commercial procurement is relevant if we are convinced that there is significant need for research and development to achieve our objectives, and then we could use a more gradual selection as provided here. Uh, in this model, different suppliers compete through different research and development phases, with the number of competing suppliers being reduced after each evaluation phase. The commercialization takes place in the last phase, phase four, where a commercial pro procurement on the developed solution is conducted. Um, this model on the slide here is only an illustration on how we could do such a pre-commercial procurement. The important thing is we could use several phases, like phase one, two, and three, going from a solution design to a prototype development to a test series to see when we are ready to get to phase four, which is a phase where we do a commercial procurement. In this phase, it will also be possible for the market to compete and provide us with a solution similar to the one developed in the pre-commercial phase. Information about this kind of competition would also be published in the TED and Dauphin databases for this competition model. In general, the pre-commercial procurement takes longer to implement, but its main strengths lie in that it's better suited for ensuring sufficient testing and selection of suppliers which can best address the innovation challenge we have. Importantly, it also allows us to give economic incentives on several stages in the process therefore ensuring us the development of a solution. I hope these few words about the different models have made sense to you. Um, I would like to hand over the stage to Alfie Gewang, who is professor in game-based learning, not technology, from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Thank you, Hayo. Uh, so my take on this innovation challenge is uh, that it represents a great opportunity for those who have something to bring to the table. Uh, because even though the exact competition model, as uh, Hayo talked about, has not been chosen yet, we have given uh, the um, intensive structure a lot of uh, thought. Um, incentive, sorry. Uh, we know that we can't expect small edtech developers or game developers um, or various experts in other fields to work for free for several months. Um, so we hope, and with the hope, that in the end you will win a grand prize. Uh, we have therefore set aside approximately 15 million Norwegian kroner um, or 1.8 million US dollars to support the development and testing for or between one and three applications. Uh, we also are prepared to provide um, R&D support or input uh, during the, the development process from experts if we see that we in some way can improve the concept. Um, and we will ensure high visibility and showcase the best applications, including those that have created the applications, um, to key industry partners. We know it's hard to be visible in the app, as an app developer, so we'll help the three best or the five best developers to be uh, visible in that market. All this while you have the opportunity to contribute to learning and improve uh, psychosocial uh, well-being for Syrian children. So Limarte will now chair a Q&A session uh, where we'll try to answer some of the questions that you might have. Yes. Thank you, Alfinge.